fix on Dash Radio. Get the sugar. Man, this has been such a beautiful day so far. Waking up feeling good, waking up feeling good. But I'm about to introduce to you all our first guest. He's an actor, comedian, Emmy Award winner. Wow. He's a father. <laughs> he does a little, a little bit of everything. I love it. So go ahead and introduce yourself so I can stop teasing people about <laughs> this dope guest. How you guys doing? I'm Melvin Jackson Jr. You may know me from the HBO show The Wire. And everybody hates Chris. And I play Curtis Blow in the new edition story. Man, how does it feel to be part of so many shows that are like a staple in TV show history? You know, like you, you've you been on some yeah, that's dope shit, man. man. Yeah, how's it's, that feel? Man, it's truly been a blessing. You know, mm-hmm. it's all about hard work and, and constantly believing in yourself. And I think that, you know, with that and the good um, support system that I have, it has took, it's taken me this far. So I'm definitely appreciative of the opportunities that I've been presented with. That's what's up. That's, that's what's good. Up. That was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, yo. <laughs> nah, um, do people recognize you? Yeah, I get people recognize me. It's it's funny because the things you think they recognize me for, they don't. They re- recognize me for something like I may have done like in Detroit, like it was like a hood flick or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting what the people yeah. uh, recognize me for. They watching though. Yeah. They watching. What's it like? I remember everybody hates Chris. Was pretty. <laughs> yeah. Dumb. And the Curtis Blow. I remember that too. The Wire. The Wire. I don't yeah. really the remember wire. the Wire, but it's in the Wire. Yeah, yeah. that's dope though. That's yeah. epic, I like though. the Wire. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. So, uh, what's the most awkward situation you've had with a fan? Hmm. Well, I would I don't say awkward. I just would say it's interesting. We were um doing a, a wire party in Philadelphia, and <laughs> a fan knew where we were staying at, and I was like, "Wow! Like, wow. how did that information get out?" <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was one of those things that I wasn't prepared for, but I was like, "Oh, I guess this is what you go through in in this life." <laughs> you go through that in Philadelphia, so. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Well, I, so you're uh, oh, my bad. No, you so your uh, your wife is also an actress, yes. right? And both you guys were, you guys won Emmy Awards. Well, or we're actually, we're nominated. Nominated, well, okay. Well, we did win by by being nominated and for us being the first African-American uh, married couple to be nominated. So, yes, as Cicely Tyson said, there is no win, there is no loser, losers. We're all winners. Yeah, that's, good. that's true because, I mean, every everyday <laughs> actors aren't even getting nominated. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. to get nominated and your wife, yeah, I mean, that's a dope feeling. And then you even got, you know, that competition in the exactly. house. You know, yeah. everything's leveled out. Exactly. And, I'm, and I was kind of like, Maybe it was the reason we I, we I didn't win or we didn't win. So like if I would have won, I would have felt lower. Like dang, like <laughs> <sighs> if she would have won, you know, they'd be like, dang, I wish I had one. You know, so yeah. I mean, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, it's tied up. That's dope. No doubt. Do you ever go out for auditions for like the same show or us movie? Mm. Mm. No, we we actually haven't. That's, that's, that's never happened. Nah. Mm. Coming. We trying to create That'd our own cool, show. Though. Look, we That'd trying to create our own show. That's, that's what I was about to That'd say. Be, yeah. what, would you, what would you guys name it? Have you guys like yeah, you know speculated? I'm, I'm got some spe- um working on called the Jacksons. So you know just kind of giving it like that Martin Gina Fresh Prince type of feel. Just yeah. telling you know we have a funny life. You yeah. know and being in this business and me coming into this um relationship with three kids like that's hard for somebody you know mm-hmm. to come into. So it's just so many different layers to, to tell the story of how to to make it in this business, but also make sure that you. St- you know you're stable and you're you're grounded yeah definitely so I, what, how do you guys what do you guys do to keep each other motivated you know what i'm saying because i know you guys probably got really busy schedules and then with the family like how do you guys have well, how do you have your downtime because i mean if you're on a project right. you could be gone for months yeah and then say you come home she goes to a project right. she's gone for months yeah so how do you guys you know manage that to keep the relationship strong you know what i'm saying and building on that well we definitely visit each other like you know when she was tooting the hands made tale in um toronto i went up there and you know we celebrated our uh pre-anniversary uh celebration so i went up there and i spent time with her and then you know when she was in oakland i was supposed to go up to to Oakland to, um, to visit her, but we were doing the Emmy campaign stuff, so it wasn't time to do that. But we just make time for each other. We sit and we binge watch shows. We, we just laugh and we have fun. And so we make sure that we have time for each other because it's important. And mm-hmm. definitely in this business, trying to stay married is, is hard enough, <laughs> <laughs> you know, being yeah. married. So definitely, yeah. you know, just staying, making sure that we remember we matter first and mm-hmm. everything else is secondary in the sense of our careers. That's, what, that's what's up. I like that. So you all don't adjust your morals for like, Casting roles or anything? No, you can't do that. You I mean you have to? You have to have a plan. Of, you know, oh, wow. it, it, it's, it, morality it, right. is important. Right. Okay. Your face. <laughs> no, but it, but it's real out here because some things, certain things will test you, and you have to just stand your ground on. You know, it's not about the money. I'm not gonna do something just because it's paying me a lot of money. I gotta mm. make sure that I can look at myself in the mirror. I can make sure that my 
my supporters, I don't call them fans, my supporters are like, oh, okay, Melvin is staying consistent. He's not selling out or he's not doing it for the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. So you say you don't do it for the money. So are you picky about certain roles that you go out on auditions for because the description might be something that you may not like? So how do you make that de that decision, basically? Absolutely, I'm very picky. I think that now with me writing and producing my own stuff, like I'm very picky because I don't have to just take the the, op the project that the, somebody presents to me. I can actually write it or I can have somebody write it and produce it. And so it's for me, it's like it's overall longevity. I'm looking at I'm looking at longevity. I'm looking at short term. I'm looking like, OK, what's going to get me to the next level? Am I going to continue to elevate or I'm going to continue to stay in the same space and do this same thing that everybody's already seen me do? Yeah. No, we can't do that. Yeah, we no. cannot be stagnant. Nah. Okay, we don't have time to be stagnant. <laughs> so we just, we, you know, it's been a big week in hip hop. You know, Lil Wayne just dropped his new project. What you think about that? I listen. I listen. I'm like on number two so far, so I haven't listened to it. But I'm, still <laughs> I'm on number two, right? You know, <laughs> he just turned this shit yeah, up. Right? You know, I was trying to listen to it, and I was like, okay. So I, I, I think it's definitely good for hip hop because mm. you know. Lil, people have been waiting for the Carter Five for so long. Yeah. And I was listening to this one song and I'm like, it don't sound like Lil Wayne. It looks like it's different. Like he used I don't know if he changed his voice up a little bit, but it's I think it's definitely good for hip hop and mm -hmm. I'm glad to see it out. People getting what they want and I'm looking forward to hearing it, listening front to back. Yeah. And, and just, you know, continue to embrace hip hop because I think that people forget like, man, like hip hop was really about you know, love. It was really about, um, you know, saying I'm the best MC without mm. the guns and all that stuff. And I think it just kind of went left field. So it's just good to just continue to support each other yeah. in hip hop. And you know, like you see Kanye supporting um, the Carter, not the Carter Five, but yeah, Carter Five. And you know, his coming out thing today, right? So oh, oh Kanye's album? supposedly, yeah, yeah. So you know, people dropping surprise albums. Yeah, in, you know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, Kanye, he, he could save that shit. <laughs> You gave up on him. <laughs> I'm, I've been done, dude. Did you see? Uh, did you see him? Um, I think it was earlier in the week. He went to speak at a college, and he was trying to like make an excuse for wearing the "Make America Great Again" hat. And he's like, "Well, I put it on one of my hats. It's not the same style of hat. Still the same, same message. message. Right. You know what I'm saying? Message, like, yeah. so the whole college, the the audience just got dead silent. And he was like, he said like a comment like, "Yeah, there's an awkward silence in here because like y'all don't get it." No, it's like, nigga, you no, don't get right. it. Right. Exactly. You're the one that don't get it. Right. The whole world gets it but right. you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But how do you feel when you see somebody with so much power and a big audience send a message like he sends without... Because sometimes I think his delivery be wrong, right. but on this specific topic, there's no way you could be delivering something wrong. I think he was trying to aim to take the power from that hat right. and give it a different message, but that's just impossible. But how do you feel when somebody like him with so much power and a, a fan base that he could tell them, turn to the left, and they'll, they'll all do it with no questions, puts a bad message out there like that? I mean, it's, it's Kanye, you know? And so mm -hmm. nothing surprises us with Kanye. And I think he's just showing you that, I'll say he doesn't care, but he's going to do what he wants to do, and he's not going to be um, chained or, or whipped into what people want him to be. And... Yeah, we may not agree mm -hmm. to what he said, but it's freedom of speech. True. So we can't say, yeah, there's freedom of speech on us marching and doing whatever we need to do, but mm -hmm. then it can't, it's no freedom of speech on what he's doing, even though we don't agree with it. Yeah. So I don't go and judge person by mm -hmm. what they're, they're doing or what they're saying. I got to make sure that I'm doing the opposite to make sure that I have um, a support, a, assist, um, I have a message that actually reaches the people that needs to be reached. Because yeah. if you're looking for certain people to be your savior, you're looking for the wrong. You're looking in the wrong yeah, direction, you know. Especially um, in a celebrity. A yeah. celebrity can't be the savior. We're all flawed, you know. Yeah. So I think and but everybody sees the glossed up shit. They they see what's presented and they think that's just that person's life. Not knowing, you know, they had the same struggles as the everyday person. And I like that you're saying that you have to respect his opinion and that he stands behind that opinion, even though we may not agree on it. Right. You gotta respect the man for standing up for wow. what he believes in. But I say that to say that <laughs> hey, hey. I'm still Is not fucking with him. Is that you? Codigo, that was that was a breakthrough. Right, right. That was a, that huge was a Kanye breakthrough. breakthrough. Hey, hey, that's as good as it's gonna get <laughs> with me wow. now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we need like a Kanye applause. Right? Right? <laughs> that was really? a breakthrough. Oh. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> How crazy. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I'm sorry, I cut off your little nah, you good. glamorous. Wow. 
you know, forgiving speech you hey, have I wasn't for no Kanye. <laughs> I just liked what he said. <laughs> no, but you did say something real, though. You know, like, because we all mess up, you know? And the minute someone looks at us and starts critiquing what we're doing, right. they might have a lot to say, too, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're going to feel like, I don't give a fuck. Like, right. this is this is how I feel. This is my freedom of speech. So I feel that. That's really dope. But you, And it's crazy because people in the, inter the, the, the lim limelight and entertainment have the hardest job because what they say is, they do is so scrutinized. You know, mm -hmm. you can't be human. Like, you may say, I don't like Rihanna, I don't like such and such, but because you're that person, you say, oh, you hear what they say? They say don't like that. And they don't know why they said it, but just because they said it, like, it's just magnified. And I yeah. think that that's the thing when people be like, oh, I want to be famous. Do you really? Yeah. Do you really understand what it what takes to be in this business? Famous, but, yeah. you, know, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. you, you get in an accident, people want to sue you just because you got money. You know, so it's just... People got to understand, like, there is a cause and effect to everything yeah. you do in life. And then what you when you deliver a message, they'll chop it up to where it sounds fucked up. Yeah. Well, it, but sounds it's like, not. it sounds like what the people want you to say. Exactly. Yeah. But they don't put the whole, the whole shit out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody could have chopped, chopped up what you said, and, and it would just be like, you know, Kanye standing behind what he believes in. And then that shit goes viral, and yeah. they're gonna be like, Melvin Jackson's a <laughs> Trump supporter. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he never said that right, shit. Yeah. You know, he's just saying, stand behind what you, you know, believe in. But, exactly. um, but what about when people, like, you think you've been typecasted? When, so when people see you, like, oh, that's dude from such and such. Cause I know, like, a lot of people get emotionally caught up in one character right. and think that that's the character that they wanna see every time. Like, you know, and don't like see other roles. You ever had that? Happened to you? Yeah, in the beginning, that that was happening a lot because they like, oh, the wires say they just wanted to, you know, have me in a hood project, and mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, I'm like, I'm more than just a hood project. I'm doing comedy, and so it was me also creating projects to get me outside a box. So I started exactly. doing comedy, and I started doing different things. So where people didn't just see, oh, he's not just that guy. Like diversifying right. himself. Yeah, you have to. Because How important is that though? Very important yeah. because as you see, you'll see a person who's one character, and that's all they play, and you're mm -hmm. like. I'm tired of seeing them do that, and you you stop supporting them, yeah, not intentionally, but you like ah, I see somebody over here is more entertaining. Like you already know what's next, exactly. Because like, I, I know a lot of people don't know how hard it is to be uh, an actor and going on those auditions, and how much it takes to how many no's you get before right. that. How, how, how was that for you? Man, it, it's crazy because I came into business as a manager, so my mindset was a little bit different than mm. the normal actor. So. I, I, I get tired of auditioning, Cause especially, yeah. you know, you go in there for something and you really like it and you don't book it. Or you may go in for something you prepare out. People don't understand, like, the backstory that you have yeah. as far as preparing for the audition. Not just mm -hmm. getting the audition, but preparing for yeah. it. The hours you take into it and you go into it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go slay this. Mm -hmm. And you mess it up. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, man, I just... And you can't get it back. Yeah, Once I know, you're about to do it, you're like, oh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> and so you mess... You, you're, you're so in your head about certain things that you don't have fun in the process. And you be like, man, I don't want to go on no more auditions. Yeah. And you kind of give up yeah. without giving up because it's so much. Yeah, how do you get past that, though? You just have to understand that, you know, you have an opportunity that others are not given. Mm -hmm. So my acting coach always says, have fun or quit. So if you're not going to have fun and do what you do, then quit. Don't do it. Yeah. And so that's, that was the thing that motivated me. Just like, I have the opportunity to go in for these movies that I, you know, and audition for projects that, you know, a person would, would die to, to be in. So it's just like, for me, I'm like, take the opportunity be um, responsible, be thankful, and just have fun with it. Yeah. Is there any uh, roles that you went for that you didn't get in the movie became something big? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> man, I knew I wasn't right for the role. Um, it, it was Easy in the NWA movie. Mm. And um, you went for Easy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see that. I know, right? I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I told you no, bro. Yeah, man. I, I, I think, wasn't mad about I it. I think that was good for your yeah, career. Yeah, right. Yeah. If I would have seen you on the screen, I'd be right. like, get this nigga. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, this yeah, that's nigga my man easy. too, Jason Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, it's, and so that's for me. It's like as an actor, as a person, I like I'm okay when I don't get mm. certain things because I I should have spoke up and said I don't feel like I'm right for this role. Let me go on for something else. But I didn't. Um. What else? It was something for ATL. Um, big Boy got the role for uh, the oh, role I wanted for Big uh, for ATL. The oh the movie ATL yeah, with wow. Ti and uh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, so man, you know it's it's, it's life, man. I yeah. first came out to Cali when I first came out. I was doing auditions and shit, and I could not, I couldn't do it. I went to <laughs> I went uh, audition for How High, mm. and I didn't get the role. And I had to go to the movies and watch the role that I didn't see. I'm like, that I didn't well, get. Right? Was I was like, a, I'm not a, doing this. What now. was the role that you uh, went for? It, it was Silas, the dude. That, oh, the one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But that, that was Method Man, wasn't it? Here. No, 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 no. Oh, no, that was Red, Red Man. Red no, Man. Red no, Man. No, 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 it was Red Man. Silas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right, well, the yeah. dude that, that that died and they were smoking. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. That, oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you it know, was like, like, I was like, you look I was like nervous. him too. Yeah, I was nervous. <laughs> you look like him. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. That's why I like, <laughs> it was because when I seen it, I was like, damn, I could have, you know, yeah. and that, and that made me feel like, all right, well, maybe I need to step my confidence up or mm-hmm. something. Something happened where I didn't get the role, but that's what I wanted to ask you. Is like, a lot of people can't even get past that hump. Right. And that's a, that's a, a confidence. Like, how do you get that confidence boosted? I mean, just knowing that. Or you want it, like, that you just want to be involved in that industry, something like that, right? You gotta, like I said, you gotta have fun with it. And yeah. I think that this business is so political mm-hmm. that it can crush you, man, because you, if you piss the wrong person off, if you do something, then somebody can blacklist you. Yeah. And think about one snap, you can get blacklisted. And it's like, really? Uh-huh. And so for me, the confidence level is, but like I said, trusting in myself, believing in myself, and trusting in God that I can do anything. You know, That's I can wrong. do anything I put my mind to, as my mom always say. And so, for me, you gotta keep going. You gotta have, find a way to have fun, and when it stops being fun, you gotta find something else to do. Yeah. And I've been doing this for a long time, been, you know. And so it's, I, I don't see myself doing anything else outside of, you know, not to say outside of entertainment, but just as a as a job. Yeah. It's something like that career, I like. Right. You're right. Yeah. That's so, all, man. Congratulations on all that. Yeah. Thank you. Right now. I want to know what made you want to go from being a manager, someone who's in control of like calling the shots, to being an actor, being the one who has to go out for auditions and all that. What really made you make that decision executives every time i was going in to submit my artists and you know pitch their uh, demos they were like what are you doing i'm like what do you mean what i'm doing i'm managing artists they're like no what are you doing so and actually it was just saying you need to put all this energy you put into someone else into yourself and see how far you go and so i did that and i was kind of skeptical of it because i was like well i'm representing artists i'm all about trying to help somebody get to their dream but if you can't get somebody signed well, then what do you do so i know that i can go as far as i want to go I can't push somebody as far further than they want to go. And so for me, I turned that energy into myself. And so I became my own boss too by by um submitting myself, by going on audition, but also understanding that I can create opportunities as well. I can pitch myself to people who are doing projects. So that was the the turning point for me. That's real. I like that. That's that's really dope. So tell everybody right now where we can find you, what's your social media, and what can we wait to be seeing to to be what, what what can we wait to like yeah basically yeah, no, what's no, next like, no no the easy, easy, you know, no the next time I see you I don't no want to see no funny shit right. I'll be like I'll be nah. like <laughs> nah you can check me Pick out the right um, <laughs> if you if you have not seen the web series that I was um nominated for that I wrote and produced called this Eddie Murphy role is mine not yours check it out on my um, website melvinjacksonjr.com is also on YouTube you can catch me on Melvin Jackson Jr Instagram Facebook Twitter the next thing I'm working on, I'm um, currently working on a doc- domestic violence documentary called I'm a Survivor, No Longer a Victim. Mm. And just wanted to help sh- use my voice as a man to help women bring their, their stories to life and continue to speak about domestic violence because I think we sometimes put it under the rug like it's, like it's not as big as it should be. And just because, you know, people who are celebrities or whatever are accused of these things that we don't uh, um, hold hold them, hold them accountable for it. And I think that we should be uplifting our women, not beating them and, and bringing them Definitely. down. So it's important for me to help share this message respect right. i love it that's I what's love up that. and there you have it that's melvin jackson so what we're gonna do is Ju- melvin jackson mess- you messing up the brand man oh my bad <laughs> my bad melvin jackson jr melvin jackson jr <laughs> aka almost easy e <laughs> 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 nah but that's the man right there and you know definitely follow his old his older projects and new projects coming up so what we're gonna do is take a quick break you listen to the fix on dash talk x 